13 Best Low-Income Housing Tips You'll Learn This Year Communities will become less diverse if there is no provision of cheap housing. They may lose out on the chance to interact with people from other socio-economic or cultural backgrounds, learn from them, and enjoy their company if they don't take advantage of it. When cheap housing is incorporated into a community, bringing individuals from all socio-economic backgrounds together, the community may grow richer, and community life can ultimately become more enjoyable. Affordable housing, however, is not solely a pressing issue of the extremely poor. One need not be poor at all to know that housing expenses are high or that the housing options offered to persons with low to moderate earnings are generally restricted at best. The demand for affordable housing is a serious challenge at many economic levels. If you've read this far, you're probably seeking advice on how to locate low-income housing for yourself or your family. Don't be anxious. In this post, we've gathered the best advice you'll learn, so keep reading to learn more. What exactly is low-income housing? Low-income housing, often known as affordable housing, is accommodation for low-income people or families. Even though housing has been recognized as a human right under several international treaties, to access housing for low-income persons, various official, commercial, and non-profit sector programs have assisted low-income persons in obtaining housing. Numerous small-scale acts have sought to address the issue individually or locally. Whether done officially via organized civil disobedience or informally by squatting and reclaiming abandoned land and buildings, attempts have been undertaken throughout history to meet the urgent demand for low-income housing. There are still some clever methods to cut the expense of putting a roof over your head. Continue reading to learn about some options for seeking less expensive homes. The following are the best ideas you'll discover to obtain inexpensive accommodation right away. Low-income housing tips. Here's to finding a nice house on a tight budget. 1. Understand your budget. A thorough budget plan may assist you in determining what you can afford in terms of housing expenditures. It may also help you make educated decisions about what you need to cut down on to keep up with rising rent or bills. Financial advisors advise you to split your monthly post-tax income into percentages based on how much you intend to spend. Consider all costs such as meals, transportation, utilities, payments, and contributions into savings or retirement accounts. Experts believe that paying 20 to 35 percent of one's earnings for housing is reasonable, with a range of 25 to 27 percent being the sweet spot. Housing is recognized as inexpensive in the United States if it costs no more than 30 percent of a resident's after-tax income. If you spend much more than that, it will be tough to purchase other essentials, save money, and, of course, have fun. However, according to a 2007 poll, more than 60% of Americans spent more than 30% of their income on housing expenditures. Avoid any dwelling possibilities that are more expensive than your budget allows. If you live closer to work, you may be able to afford higher housing costs since you will be utilizing less public transit. Alternatively, if you pay a rent that covers part or all of your utilities, you may include it as well. 2. Make use of connections. Simply by leveraging your connections expertise, you may sometimes locate shockingly excellent discounts that you would not have found otherwise. Tell your friends, neighbors, colleagues, and relatives that you're searching for a new home. Someone in your cubicle may know someone is moving out of a fantastic, low-cost home. Maybe a buddy of yours recently found out about a new job opening in their building and hasn't even thought to post a job listing or ad on the internet. You may also save money on expenditures such as broker fees by using word of mouth. No one else will have to work for you if you make your friends work for you. 3. Apply for Section 8 In the United States, there is a program known as Section 8. It is funded and administered by the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD. Millions of families in the United States are in a similar scenario. There is no way that their occupations will pay enough to meet their housing costs. Consequently, many have turned to the federal government's Section 8 housing voucher program for assistance. The program is handled by over 2,400 public housing agencies, FAS, at the local level. Low-income families with children, 
the elderly, and those with disabilities are among the groups targeted by Section 8. During the Great Depression, this program was created. Congress enacted the United States Constitution in 1937. The Housing Act marked the start of government housing aid in the United States. It provided funding for the construction of high-quality public housing units for low-income inhabitants. The flats were maintained and supervised by the local public housing authority. The Housing Act was revised in 1961 to establish the Section 23 Leased Housing Program. Under this initiative, qualified low-income renters were placed in private flats rented by local housing agencies. Renters paid a share of the rent, and the housing authorities covered the difference between what the tenants paid and what the building's owner might have gotten on the open market. The housing authorities also maintained the buildings. Who is then eligible for this assistance? Aside from these realities, if you are a low-income person in need of rent assistance or other help via the voucher program, you need first to assess whether you satisfy certain basic income standards. Income requirements vary by region, but your family should generally earn no more than 50% of the median income in your area. Every year, HUD calculates the median income in various locations. Because Section 8 is not an entitlement benefit, not everyone who qualifies for a housing voucher receives one. According to current estimates, just approximately 25% of families that qualify for assistance get it. Qualified families face severe competition for vouchers in many places. Waiting lists are often lengthy. Because of the overwhelming demand, some local housing authorities have even stopped accepting applications. Other factors that may assist you in qualifying include Being 62 years old or older Becoming a U.S. citizen, veteran of the armed forces, widow or widower More than 42 hours per week of labor Being handicapped Possessing either U.S. citizenship or lawful immigration status Presently live in a shelter Having children Local housing authorities must additionally prioritize very low-income households, defined as those earning less than 30% of the area's median income. Every year, 75% of the new candidates accepted to the program must be very low-income. If you feel you qualify for a Section 8 housing voucher, you should contact your local public housing agency. 1. Find a roommate you can rely on. Finding a roommate or roommates to share your living space and help you save money can be a win-win situation. Make sure, though, that you take the time to choose a trustworthy person with whom you can share your ideas. Otherwise, you might find yourself paying inexpensive rent for an uncomfortable living environment. Worse, if the roommate decides to skip out on you, you could be stuck with rent and bills you can't afford. When you've found a good match, consider drafting a roommate agreement that details each person's share of the rent, expenses, and security deposits. If both of you sign it, it will safeguard both of you in the case of a conflict. Finally, think about whether you want your roommate to sign the contract. If both you and your roommate sign, you will be protected if they violate the agreement. Being the only signatory provides you additional authority and financial responsibility for paying the entire amount of rent if the agreement fails. 2. Utilize a local affordable housing authority. State and municipal housing authorities and non-profit housing agencies in your community can assist you in locating affordable housing choices. Because many organizations have a local, community-oriented purpose, the precise services will differ depending on where you live in the nation. They may target a certain city, state, or neighborhood. Frequently, they exclusively assist low- to moderate-income people and families. Their services may include low-interest loans, broker services to assist you in finding inexpensive homes, or financial counseling to assist you with budgeting. However, many of these organizations' programs, particularly those that give direct cash assistance, might have significant waiting lists similar to the low-income housing program. 3. Make use of a referral service or a broker. Working with a referral agent is similar to having your human resources department from the client's standpoint. Someone pre-screens full-service real estate brokers to guarantee that those you meet are a suitable match. Because it's always a good idea to do your due research, 
a real estate referral agent may be on the front lines, assisting you to spend your limited time on the greatest possibilities. When a customer meets with a real estate referral agent for the first time, the referral agent strives to understand the client's goals, objectives, and time frame. This data is then utilized to connect the customer with a skilled full-service agent who can suit their requirements. Property owners may sometimes provide these services with discounts that they do not supply to the general public. The greatest thing is that these services are frequently free since property managers pay to bring in dependable renters. 4. Make a deal with the landlord. Consider providing something extra to show that you have what it takes to be an ideal tenant, one who pays rent on time, stays for the long haul, and respects the property. You might offer to pay rent in advance, put down a larger security deposit, obtain renter's insurance, have the property professionally cleaned when you move out, or sign a long-term lease. If you have the financial means, you might even offer to pay a higher monthly rent. Be realistic, though, and avoid making promises you won't be able to keep. Tenants have been known to haggle for a variety of deals, such as the sale of a plane or sports tickets, as well as appealing products. It's also a good idea to bargain at the end of the month when landlords are more willing to make a deal as they become concerned about missing a full month's rent payment. Finally, be prepared to make your compromises. Because it provides the landlord with consistency, signing a longer lease may frequently result in a discount. The same may be said about proposing to pay many months' rent in advance. 5. Consider the cost of utilities. Don't forget about the expense of utilities. In addition to the monthly rent, you'll almost certainly have to pay for different utilities throughout your stay. These utilities are water, gas, air conditioning, sewage, waste, and electricity. Your lease should explicitly state what utilities you are responsible for covering. Utilities may be included in the rent in certain cases. If you have any issues regarding who pays for other utilities, consult with your landlord before signing the lease. 6. Become a property manager. A property caretaker is someone who cares for a property when its owners are away or otherwise unable or unable to care for it. Home caretakers vary from individuals who conduct sporadic house sitting to those who look after a property for years at a time. Some individuals work as property managers for private dwellings, while others work for commercial properties and holiday resorts. There are several possible advantages for someone who wishes to become a property caretaker. He might, for example, be paid. People will sometimes become property caretakers in return for free or almost free rent. Others may take up this work to travel to new areas, and many people appreciate being free to manage their own time without having a boss looking over their shoulders. Consider spending your days at a millionaire's beach mansion or on a peaceful rural estate with acres and acres of land. In most cases, caretakers must undertake additional labor and live in the home, such as yard maintenance, repairs, or caring for pets or animals. 7. Explore other neighborhoods. Take a stroll around the area before signing a lease to get a picture of the community. Spending time in that place will allow you to better assess the overall age and demographics of the neighborhood. It would be best if you also looked at the safety record of the neighborhood. Aside from demographics and safety, find out whether the community has any unique restrictions. Before signing a lease, you should have a firm grasp of their expectations and standards. It would be best to investigate any local traffic or parking restrictions. 8. Examine the structure thoroughly. Don't believe the nice pictures you see on the internet. Before you rent a house, please make an appointment to view it in person. Keep in mind that minor, aesthetic flaws, such as broken blinds or wall marks, might be repaired potentially by your landlord. The condition of their dwelling greatly influences people's health. Mold, rodents, and bugs may contribute to or exacerbate chronic respiratory problems, such as asthma. According to the World Health Organization, overcrowding and inadequate housing put families' health and physical well-being in danger and facilitate the spread of infectious illnesses, including TB, hepatitis, dengue fever, pneumonia, cholera, and malaria. However, deeper issues may indicate that the unit has not been adequately maintained. Look also for bugs, 
rodents, leaking faucets, water damage, lead paint, asbestos, unclean air filters, mildew, faulty heat and air conditioning systems, corrosion, broken windows and electrical problems as you go around the house. 9. Don't make abrupt purchases. It isn't easy to look for a low-cost property. Keep in mind to take your time and relax. After you've found accommodation, take a stroll around the area. Do you think it's good? Could you envision yourself settling down there? If the response is yes, follow up as soon as possible since residences are in high demand. If the response is maybe, give it some more thought. Don't let yourself get carried up in the hysteria. Give yourself plenty of time to think about what you want in a place before you go out and look for it. It is important to be prepared for the prospect of moving into a new house. 10. Always do thorough research. No matter what they say, never transmit money, your social security number, or other sensitive information to strangers. Seriously, there's a thriving market of individuals out there looking to take advantage of you. Do not sign any paperwork or hand out any money until you have conducted your investigation. To check if anything shows up, search the person's name and business with the words fraud. When looking at houses, always meet in a public area and notify a buddy of your plans. If you have any doubts, conduct further research or wait. There will always be an additional posting available tomorrow. And, if you're thinking of renting a room in someone else's apartment, make sure you meet the person or individuals you'll be living with beforehand. You'll be able to inquire about their lifestyle and habits. It won't be easy to discover the ideal apartment that meets your lifestyle and budget. Fortunately, we're here to assist. There will very certainly be some sacrifices and compromises. You may have different ideas about what you want in a house whether you're seeking friends or a spouse. Keep these 13 extremely crucial points in mind when looking for low-income housing before you sign that lease.